everybody, welcome to week 86 for Coffee with Kelly. Yes, I know, I am wearing the same outfit and using the same cup. Brian always makes a joke if I say anything about that and I think, so someone's gonna notice. And uh, uh, <laughs> I, I have had people notice. So I'm just telling you, I'm filming a couple in a row. Brian's getting ready to go to Nepal. And so I am filming them because he'll be gone. And if this is played when it is supposed to, according to my plans, this week is Thanksgiving. So happy Thanksgiving to you all. I pray that you have a blessed holiday with friends and loved ones as you enjoy spending time together and thanking the Lord for who he is and all he's done for you. Let me take a sip really quick. You know what I'm thankful for? I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful for you tuning in and listening and enjoying uh, this time with me and allowing me to share my random thoughts with you. I'm very thankful for you. And so our topic this morning is called Too Close for Comfort. Um, so let's pray. Father, we come before you this Thanksgiving week. We worship you. We adore you. We are grateful, God, for who you are and all that you give to us and your daily benefits but lord i just i'm so thankful for you your presence in my life your presence in our world god you bring us security and comfort and joy and peace in a world that is destroying all that you unite us you revive us you refresh us you fill us with your spirit and we are so thankful so Lord, I pray as we look at this topic on what it means to be too close for comfort, that you would challenge us in a way that we need to be challenged. In Jesus' name, amen. So this topic is a little weird, kind of funny, but very true. <coughs> <coughs> now all of you have probably heard of the book and then the movie called The Sh Shades of Grey. I have not seen it um, or read it. I hear it's pretty provocative and a very sexual book and it made quite a stir within the community, but I have not read it. Now, some years ago, I found a book that's called Between, can you see it? Between Shades of Grey. And it's the author is Ruta Sepetis. I don't know how to say her last name. For a little background, I am, and if you don't know me, and I've shared it before, I'm Lithuanian. My mother was born in Lithuania. Uh, they escaped during the war, and uh, then lived in a displaced person camp in Germany until they got a sponsor. I think my mom was eight or 10 by the time they came to LA. To come, you had to have a sponsor, a job, a place to live, and they got that. Landed in LA with a lot of other Lithuanian immigrants, um, there is where my mother met my dad as they grew older, and here I am. But I'm very, I don't know if proud is the right word, but I'm Lithuanian, and I am proud of the heritage and uh, the things that they had to go through to get here. Um, so we have an interesting background. I don't know a lot about my grandparents' family. I know bits and pieces. You know when you're young, uh, I don't know, that stuff doesn't interest you like it would would when you're older. And so also my grandfather didn't talk about it much. Uh, it was a very difficult time for them, uh, very painful. They were not Jewish, but they had many Jewish friends and he would talk about you would be walking down the street you know, and then the Jews weren't allowed to walk on the street, and then you could see the smokes um, from the place where they were burning them. And he he's randomly told us stories about then, and but he's pretty quiet about it. But they also, my mom doesn't have a lot of stories because she was younger. Hers were more um, coming from the camp and the things that she knew from her parents. And that whole side of my family um, is no longer with us. They passed away. And so it's very difficult for me to sometimes put together the bits and pieces of things that I know. I know my grandpa had a brother that was sent to Siberia and, and just different things, but I don't know how to put it all together. So along comes this book and uh, it captivated me. It answered questions that I longed to know. And if not exactly, but generally, again, you see, my father, my grandfather would say how deathly afraid of Stalin they were. Um, you know, Hitler hated the Jews, but Stalin hated 
everybody, especially smart, educated, trained people, which my grandfather was one of those, and no one was safe. He felt safer, and I never understood this, but he felt safer under Hitler's regime than Stalin's. And most of us, to be honest, don't know all the stories um, that happened in the, Bal in the Baltics and the terrible genocide that occurred. At least they aren't as well known as Hitler's. I read that after the war, because the Soviet Union, right, was kind of in control of Lithuania and such, if people spoke of the brutality they experienced, that it would have been considered anti-Soviet behavior and they would have been pub, uh, punished. So many were very, very quiet about it. So the stories of Stalin and the torture and different things remained dormant for many years. But also Lithuania was occupied by Germans during the war and over 200,000 Lithuanian Jews were killed, which were an enormous percent of Lithuanian Jews. So anyways, the writer of this book is Lithuanian. <clears throat> Her goal was to write a story, it's a novel, uh, that would bring attention to the crimes of Stalin. So she went to Lithuania, she did so much research, she's the son of a Lithuanian immigrant, interviewed many, uh, an, uh, li actually son of a Lithuanian, he was in the service, uh, interviewed people and survivors and the military and museums, and she wrote a fiction story using true facts, if that makes sense. So she took all the facts and made it into a novel. And it's a story about a girl named Lena, who was 15 years old, and she was deported from Lithuania to Siberia in 1941. And the story chronicles not only her fight for survival, but also her struggle to retain faith in mankind in the midst of Stalin's terror. I read it, I cried, I read some more, I envisioned, I could probably cry right now, I just can't because I'm talking, I don't want to. Um, I envisioned my family in this story and what it must have been like um, and pieced together, I could find pieces of stories that my grandfather would talk about in the story. And so again, I made my whole family read it and I just, I, uh, it, it was amazing. So the title, Between Shades of Grey, the reason they call it that had nothing to do with the shades of gray, you know, the, of the book. It said, what was the inspiration for the title of the book? And she said, we often characterize things in extremes, but things aren't always black and white. Sometimes the truth lies somewhere in the middle between the shades of gray. I met some survivors who told me that a Soviet guard had helped them in some way or showed them a small kindness that saved their life. Such a person was a hero to me, and I wanted to include that heroic element in the novel. So I created the character of Kretsky, a young man who can't see things in black and white as the Soviet, as the Soviet system demands of him. He has reverence for human life and is deeply conflicted. Through him, the de deportees see a bit of human kindness peeking out between the many shades of gray. So that's where... If you want to read this book, it's good. That's where the title came from. Okay, long story to get to my point. The title, it is too close to the nasty one. Too close. And again, I said my whole family's reading this. And we all felt, you know how you carry a book sometimes if you're going to wait at the doctors, you're on the soccer field, whatever. We all felt like we had to hide it because people were going to think we're reading the nasty one. Because if they just saw the shades of gray, they'd kind of look at like you. Hmm. And that did happen. So I had to shove it in my book bag or whatever. It became actually pretty funny. The book, so different, completely different, different author, storyline, and goal, but the title, too close for comfort. And I pulled, when I saw this book this morning, I don't know why the Holy Spirit put this in my mind, but he did. And I was reminded about what Jesus said in John 17, 16. He said, they are not of this world, speaking of us, his, his uh you know, those who believe in him. They are not of this world, just as I am not of this world. Paul tells us in Romans 12 too, don't be conformed to this world. He also says in Philippians 3.20, our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. John tells us we are of God, not of this world. He tells us not to love the world or the things of the world. So basically, 
We are not of this world. We are called, ladies, to be different, to be set apart. A new hope, a new country with a citizenship, a new inheritance. We are different. We are destined for glory. But while we are in this tent, like we talked about last week in uh, week 85, we live here temporarily in this tent, in this world. And we struggle with them t- with this temptation to look like the world, to act like the world, to dress like the world, to talk like the world, to engage in life as we are in the world. We don't want to be seen as different. We want to be close. We want to be same, same, but different. Sometimes we don't want to call attention to ourselves. And oftentimes we can cross lines to fit in and we can get too close for comfort, so to speak, with this world where there doesn't look like there's much difference between us and them. Now, I'm not talking about uh, being relatable and being in the world as far as to share Christ and to build bridges so that we can have an influence. I talk about that a lot. Or to be, I'm holier than thou and you are there and we are here. And that's not what I'm talking about. But I'm talking about our attitude and our perspective and our lifestyle being too close for comfort. We want to not be different. Um, it's not comfortable. This book, the only difference, again, between this book is the title, Between. Otherwise, it looks the same. And sometimes we live our Christian lives like that. We just want to be different by the word Christian, but everything else we want to function in the secular world and live in a carnal fashion, but yet have the name Christian over our, you know, over us. We can be guilty of hiding our light. Like I used to hide the book when I was reading and didn't want anybody to know, but for a different reason. We don't want to be seen as different. It's not comfortable. So we keep our mouth shut, our lights under a a bushel, so others won't be offended or perhaps we don't lose friends or family members. Friends, let's love people. Let's love people in the world, but not love the world or the things of the world or the systems of the world. Let's not try to blend in and be one of them and look like them. We are set apart. Let's not try to live between the shades. Let's not try to be so close that people can't tell a difference. Let's shine in this world. And a few weeks ago, our topic was so shine. Let's do that. Let's so shine that we would be different. Let's live set apart. Let's be set apart in our hearts and our minds and our lifestyle, shall we? Happy Thanksgiving again. I pray you would kind of meditate and ponder on that and um, what it means and to and actually to see how close to the line are you living just a challenge I don't know I know I'm looking at myself and reminding myself constantly to be set apart and it's okay not to be accepted here it's okay that others think I'm different it's okay that I have different priorities in my life it's more than okay it's right and it's healthy and I'm asking God for Romans 12, 2 in my life not to be conformed um, by this world. Let's pray. Father, I thank you. Help us to uh, be more like you. Allow you to, con- uh, to transform our hearts, which would result in a transformed life. Lord, I don't want to be just like everybody else in the world. I want people to look at me and see you. And I know that looks different in all of us, but I pray, Father, that it's, it's, they can tell in the things I talk about and the things I desire and my passions and how I love people and how I want to serve. Father, I pray they would see you in those aspects of my life. And so change us, Lord, to look more like you. And uh, Lord, I pray that you would bless these women and their Thanksgiving holidays this week. Uh, May they honor you and bring you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys. I love you, and I'm so thankful for you.